Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality. This is a video about the, the uh, tool family or the uncivilized technology tool category we call the sling and spear. These are the tools that are going to allow you to uh, procure food, right, to hunt with and to uh, protect yourself with. These are tools that uh, all human beings in every culture, everywhere throughout history have had. They've always had things to cut and dig with. They've always had cordage, uh, blankets and clothing, etc. Uh, fire light containers and one of the big ones is the sling and spear so you see that we talk about that all the time sling and spear uh, we'll talk about slings in another video uh, I do like the slings and YouTube uh, evidently there's a resurgence in slinging lately because there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of cool footage there's one guy in particular I really like um, man he can he can throw those rocks but uh, maybe that can go in the, the description anyway uh, let's talk about the spear. So let's say uh, some wild situation occurs and um, the post-apocalyptic uh, zombie, what do kids worry about, zombies? Anyway, something happens and there's no grid. We've gone feral again. We're back to the, the, uh, the uh, pre-ice age. I know everybody's like, oh, I gotta have lots of ammo, gotta have lots of this. Eventually you're gonna run out of ammunition or whatever. What would be the best type of uh, weapon uh, to have to procure food or to protect yourself and that's going to be the first thing that humans ever had which was the spear basically a stick with a pointy end on it and this was advantageous because I don't have claws I don't have um, fangs and talons and stingers but I do have a sharp pointy stick that I can poke into something right it's nice to do uh, you know swords and slashing or maybe my hatchet but that's awful close a spear allows me to keep things away and poke holes in it Living things don't like holes poked in them. Uh, if you've ever been um, cut or stabbed, uh, for instance, I've been cut. I caught a cut from somebody up in the groin one time. I can't show you that on camera. Uh, it was a little scary. Didn't actually, it wasn't that actually that bad until I saw the, the, you know, the meat kind of sticking out. That was kind of gross. Uh, plus, I thought I had my, my genitals had been severed for a hot second, but that turned out not to be the case. But it was worrying. That cut wasn't so bad. And then at another time, I received a stab uh, in the leg here with uh, uh, just a little knife. It didn't even, I mean, it didn't even really hurt, but I had this sort of visceral reaction to it. I, I didn't, I thought he bit me. Uh, I kicked him and then, uh, different story. And then I stood back and I saw the knife kind of sticking on my leg and my inside's like, oh shit, you've been stabbed. And I just sort of sat down. So there's a visceral reaction to being stabbed in a fight. Uh, so in self-defense, you shouldn't do any of this nonsense knife fighting. You should be seeking to poke holes in people. YouTube disclaimer, I'm not advising anyone to poke holes in anybody. I'm just saying for um, clarification purposes. Now, it'd be even better if I could poke holes in an assailant from way over here. Or a lion or a pig or uh, a bear. Not that you're hunting bears with a spear, but you get the point. Poking holes in things, the spear is the quintessential earliest human weapon. And we use that to represent a class of tools, which does include uh, the modern equivalent, which I prefer, the AR-15. Now I can poke holes and shit from way over here, really safe. But if I don't have, I can't find AR-15 outside in the woods and make it, I can always make a spear. So let's talk uh, briefly about a couple of different um, versions of what a spear really is. It's just something, it's a hole poking device. Some of them you can slash with, and there's a special type I'll show you at the end that I really like, but it's mostly poking holes and keeping things away, controlling the distance, which is the first rule of self-protection. Could be just a stick. All right, so I'm gonna keep, I'll step back into camera with a few. Uh, it could be something as improvised as, uh, I don't even know what this is, honestly. Oh, it's a rack for like a shelf. I just grabbed that out of the utility room. Uh, this could be a spear in a makeshift. I could hammer the end and make it pointy, and I could keep somebody back and poke with that. It doesn't have to be a really long um, spear. I want to be able to use maybe about four foot or at least a meter so that I can use this indoors to protect myself in the house. I can back down a hallway or into a small bathroom, and I've got something short, park, uh, sharp park, poking out, parking, poking out, that'll keep somebody away from me. You don't necessarily throw your spear. That's more of a javelin or a... Um, What's that the Roman soldiers used to use? Pilum? 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 Anyway, so uh, I grabbed just a, just a metal thing and now I've got a spear. Even better is uh, something that has like a carbide tip, like a walking stick. This is something I've got with me when I'm outside sometimes. I don't use them a lot. If you ever see me with a walking stick, 
uh, you can guarantee it's because I wanted a spear with me and not necessarily, or I'm building a shelter with it. It's not necessarily because I need it to, to walk and get up the hills. But maybe I'm hiking somewhere I've never been before. Or maybe I'm by myself. I don't know the local area. I feel a little better knowing I have something sharp that I can, I can poke uh, or maybe hunt with. Maybe I go chipmunk hunting because I'm starving and I, I, I skewer a chipmunk. But it's a little portable spear. And the good thing about these is I can vary the length. I can go from full spear to short, uh, short thrusting spear. Right? So it's another example of a, a modified spear. When you practice spear combat with each other, the Uncivilized Vitality, we have these um, short thrusting spears, sometimes referred to as uh, Asagai spears, if I pronounce that correctly, or Ikwa spears, or Zulu thrusting spears. Um, Shaka Zulu and the, the Zulu Nation, check out the history of that. They invented the shorter thrusting spears. Super favorite of mine. And we padded these up so we can uh, spear thrust on each other in the battles. We also have shields that go with them. And then we use slings with tennis balls. Uh, last summer we didn't do it, but the summer before we had our, what was supposed to be our annual shield and sling battle in the local park. We had a couple uh, dozen people together. We had buckets of tennis balls. So some people were slinging balls into the, the battlefield. Everyone else had a shield, shield and a spear and eye protection. And we ran at each other and practiced our spear techniques and our battle techniques. Um, it was so much fun. If we set one up again this summer, we'll, we'll send out an invite and everybody can come. So kind of like, uh, what's that the voice? LARPing, right? With the, the foam swords and stuff. Now you can move on to an actual spear if you're looking to get one. This is the one I use. Uh, carrying around or have laying about my house. This is the cold steel uh, Asagai spear. I shall write that down for you. Asagai. Asagai? I think that might be how you spell it. Uh, sometimes also called an Ikloa, Ikloa spear. I don't know about that. You can Google those terms and look it up. Um, evidently, well, this is what I heard. Uh, Ikwa is the, the name Shaka Zulu gave to that or um, one of the, the Zulu warlords because that's the sound it makes when you uh, stab something with it. It goes when you pull it back out. It makes that noise. That's probably uh, apocryphal, but it's cool. It's a hard word to say. I'm not even sure I spelled it right, but a Sagai thrusting spear. There's a YouTube channel called something Shad University, Shadow University. I'll put a link. He does all kinds of medieval weaponry. He's got a couple of videos on spear that were pretty interesting. He actually actually has the my spear. I'm going to show you in a minute. So this is the cold steel uh, Asagai spear. It comes with a secure X sheath. It's got little warnings you can't see that says do not place hands here because this is the real deal. Um, because I do sword or spear combat uh, for years, I've indexed mine for certain things with some paracord just so I have the handle indexed. And this thing is no joke, right? This is the cold steel thrusting spear. It's got that short handle. I can use all of the spear techniques that I normally would use with um, the uh, sharpened stick or a, a trekking pole or just a piece of, of uh, what's that called? Shelving track that I just showed, improvised. But this is a real spear and I can use this in real self-defense. I can keep this close and I can thrust with this. I can, um, give little chops and, and uh, hook cuts on things. I can do peeling, which is a technique that comes from knife or hatchet combat. If somebody tries to punch me, I don't have to swing my, so my knife at them. I just would turn that blade, and then as they pulled their hand back, they would just peel a big strip of goo, uh, meat and muscle right off there. Just little peeling techniques or thrusts. The good thing I like about the Asagai style is it's got over a foot of blade that not only can I pierce and poke holes, if I need to, I can use other techniques like sword techniques and I can slash and thrust with the spear. So I really like this. It comes with the, the wooden handle, which you can replace. You could take the handle out and just carry the spearhead in your backpack uh, wherever you're going. And then you can fashion a wooden haft uh, for it when you get where you're going. But the cool thing about this, the cold steel, the Sagai spear, super cheap, less than 30 bucks. I say pick you up a few of them and keep them, uh, keep them around the house, keep them stashed somewhere, keep them safe if you have children. This is not a toy, this is a real spear. And uh, you can get out and practice your techniques with the spear by keeping the, hand, the head covered 
I wouldn't rely on that. You're better off using a padded one to practice the techniques, but then you have a spear for actual protection. If you are going to step all the way up past the cold steel spear and are really serious about spear combat and zombie apocalypse, this is the spit from Zombie Tools. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. They don't make them anymore. This is a custom weapon and they make these out of, I think, 10, 1051 tool steel. Uh, they're guaranteed for life. They're indestructible. It's got aluminum scales. It's one piece of steel all the way through. It is uh, ridiculous sharp. And it also has the slashing capabilities, just like the Asagai, but it's got a slightly longer blade. It's got a bit of a hand stop here for thrusting. And uh, a pump uh, a swell at the end for different indexing has got this swell in the middle so it's kind of built to index for thrusting spear combat i love this spear this is a great spear it's also a little different than the asagai 30 dollar investment 600 dollar investment or so six seven hundred dollars when it was available my wife behind the camera is probably hearing that for the first time so <laughs> trying to avoid eye contact I've had this for years. I love this spear. This spear is with me at home all the time. I don't take it out in the woods. This is just sort of my uh, fantasy zombie apocalypse spear. If we run out of ammo, I've got my spear. Now, I can't walk around with a spear all the time, obviously. It's like having... So all right, you can stop with the staring. I know. We've had it for a long time. It's been ameliorated over lots of savings. So, <laughs> get you a zombie tool spear if... Uh, if you can afford it and your wife's not gonna hit you with that spear after she's done filming the YouTube video. Or, you know what, honey, this one was only 30, right? These are only 30 bucks. That's why we have uh, three of these around the house because they're much, much cheaper. You can't walk around with a spear just like combat, I, uh, a sword for combat. I have a um, martial arts background in edged weaponry. I have a black belt in uh, Korean gumdo, which is kendo, and I've studied a couple other uh, sword styles, uh, but I can't, can't walk around with a sword. Right? Um, but it, even less can you walk around with a spear, especially, <laughs> especially this thing. You're going to get stopped immediately walking around with this. Although, you know, this is perfectly legal uh, as far as I know to have and possess. You probably shouldn't walk around with it. Remember, the main purpose of a spear is to poke holes in things at a safe distance. I carry a golf umbrella, it has just a plastic tip. Uh, you can sharpen this up a little bit. You can replace it with a carbide or a steel tip. Um, you can use your cane as a spear if you have a tip on it. It might be blunt. Uh, there's different techniques you can do with a cane that's uh, because of the crook or the hook. That's more like a halberd or a, a pole arm of sorts. A cane's its own category. But this golf umbrella, one, it's just an umbrella. Doesn't work. Aha! Look at the size of that. That's just an umbrella. Uh, the wife and I use that because we can both fit under here, and these things are great. It also cost me, I believe, $2 at uh, Home Depot or Walmart or something. Uh, it's just a golf umbrella. I carry this around me, uh, mostly when it looks like it's going to rain, but it also gives me a self-defense tool right out in the open. Right? I learned a few spear techniques. It's not as devastating as the zombie tool spit or the... Um, Cold Steel Asagai Spear, but walking around with this golf umbrella, I use that as a cane, and I've got my spear techniques right away with the handle. I can strike with it. It's not going to hurt you necessarily, depending on where it hits you, but you get that in the face, the throat, the groin, or I strike right under your, uh, underneath your guard into your shin or something. This can be a very effective improvised spear technique, and you can carry it around everywhere. Um, sometimes I even take these on the backpacking or outdoor adventures because I can use these at the end of my A-frame shelter to close that end off or when I have to go to the bathroom at night. Sometimes we're out in rainy weather. It's better than a poncho. Some backpackers uh, swear by umbrellas. Don't get the little cheap folding umbrella. Get you one that can double as a spear. So that's my uh, quick little tidbit about sling and spear and how to start thinking about what you can use as a spear. Maybe I'll do a, um, if there's interest, leave it in the comments below. Maybe I'll set up a series of basic spear uh, proficiency drills and combat techniques uh, with the spear. And you can start practicing. You start carrying around an umbrella or um, some other sort of improvised spear like a walking stick. 
And um, I got to end the video now. I got to talk to my wife about my zombie tools uh, <laughs> spit, which I've had for a long time. They discontinued it. I think they're making a new spear uh, weapon, but I'm, I'm not sure. I know I can't, I can't buy it. I understand that, but I really would like to. So leave some comments below about some other things you'd like to see with the spear. And <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. And then I will go and answer uh, about the spear. That's it.